welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. As you probably know, a Raspberry Pi has always booted its operating system from an SD card. However, earlier this year the Raspberry Pi Foundation made it possible to boot a Raspberry Pi 3 from a USB storage device. In this video I'm therefore going to try that out, and just to be wild, the USB storage device I've chosen is an SSD, which will be connected to the Pi using this SATA to USB interface. Right, in this video I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 3, you can see it here, all connected up, and I'm going to be booting it from this SSD, which is a fairly old Intel SSD I've got lying around, which I've plugged in this uh, USB 2 USB interface to. But anyway, the first thing we need to do is to go to Raspbian and make sure Raspbian is fully updated, because this won't work if you're using a version of Raspbian before 10th of April 2017. So you either need to start with a fresh version of Raspbian, or you want to do what I'm doing here, which is take your existing version of Raspbian, here it is with its lovely uh, pixel images on the uh, desktop, and we need to update the operating system to make sure it's fully up to date. So to do that, we go to a terminal, we type sudo apt get and uh, update to update the repositories. That'll take a little second to, to flick through. There we are, the Raspberry Pi, I know where to find update files, and therefore we have to give it a sudo apt, um, forgotten other type, and uh, upgrade to update, upgrade. We'll type that there. That will actually go and update the Raspberry Pi. This will take quite a while. Do we want to continue? Yes, we do. It's always got this messages from computers, haven't we? Oh, it's doing great stuff there. That'll take a little while, so we need to wait for this thing to go through. I'm not going to wait for all that here, but basically you're going to make sure your Raspberry Pi is fully updated, only on 7 or 8% at the moment. And once that's completed, I'd highly recommend you do a reboot. And so I'll come back to you when this update is completed and I've rebooted. And here we are back again. And what we now need to do is to set one bit of the Raspberry Pi's one-time programmable memory. And basically this is setting a bit that tells the Raspberry Pi it can boot from either USB or from the SD card. Now, if you're wondering what one-time programmable memory is, it's a bit like, I think the best way to think of it is like a fuse, which is once you've blown this fuse, once you've set this bit, you can't change it again. That's why it's one-time programmable. And I would point out this is still slightly experimental. This feature was released by the Raspberry Pi Foundation in uh, April 2017, but doing this is at your own risk. Do not try this on your Pi if you're terribly worried about blowing it up or if you'd mind if it blew, blew up. Do not blame me if you do this and everything goes wrong. So this is an experimental thing. Try this at your own risk. Anyway, the first thing we're going to do is just to see how this memory is currently set. And to do that, I've opened up a terminal. You can see it here. I'm going to type in this command, which I happen to have in the buffer, and this will show us the value we have when we start, which won't mean a great deal. There it is, the 17, 10, 2, 4 zeros, and an A. There, there we are. We'll try and remember that value because it'll be different, hopefully, in the future. What we now need to do is to make a change to the Raspberry Pi's configuration file so we can add a command on the, ex on the end to change this one-time programmable memory bit for booting from USB. Now there's all sorts of ways you can edit the, the, the file. I'm going to do a sudo, I'm not, I'm going to type it wrong, I'm going to do a sudo idle because I happen to like using the idle, that's how I know most of you don't, but I don't really care, I like to use it. And it's good on video because we can make the font size and big. I'm going to open up the file and we'll have to show all files and I want to go up I didn't even get all files, there we are, all files. I want to go up there in, into the root and go into boot and open up, here we are, config text. This is the file that runs when the Raspberry Pi boots up. And on the bottom of this file, we need to put in the appropriate command to tell it to us to set this one-time programmable memory, which is a command like this. Program USB boot mode equal one. That's actually quite a nice friendly bit of code, isn't it? Program USB boot mode equal one. I think I've got that right. So I can do file and uh, save. So when we boot the Pi now, it'll execute that code and hopefully program its one time programmable memory. So what I'm now going to do is to reboot the Pi. Yes, I can do it from the command line. I don't care. I'm going to reboot, restart it from the, uh, the standard desktop stuff. So we'll, we'll do that.
And uh, here we are rebooting, which is working, I think, okay. Going through the boot process, nice black screen, but hopefully it'll work. And there we are, we booted again, so clearly I've not broken it entirely already. And we'll now open up a terminal again. And of course, it won't have anything left in the buffer this time. Oh, it will, that's good, isn't it? It's kept the buffer, I'm very impressed. If we execute that command now, um, oh, it's changed. You can see it was the value starting 102. It's now the value starting 302, etc. Which means we've managed to correctly set the Pi so it should boot from USB. Right, so what we now want to do is to get a Raspbian image onto our SSD. So I've taken the SSD and plugged it into the USB adapter and plugged it into my netbook. And I've gone to the Raspbian download section of the raspberrypi.org website like, like that. And I've downloaded Raspbian from there. I won't go through that process again now. It takes quite a while. But I've basically downloaded the file here, the zip version of Raspbian, which for me is currently the July 2017 version. We then need to write that to our SSD. And to do that, I've used the utility called Etcher. I've not played with this before, but it's a very nice utility for writing images to SD cards and USB drives and indeed SSDs. You can get it from etcher.io, as you can see up there, if I could actually highlight it correctly. And as you see here, it's reckoned it's worked out. I'm using Linux 64-bit editions, so that's what I download. But there are editions for all different operating systems, or at least editions for Windows and uh, Mac and Linux. 64-bit versions and, and otherwise. So you can download the one you want and they all work exactly the same whether you're running on Windows or Linux or Mac, which is really, really nice. So we'll go to Etcher, which I've run up here. You can see running on our lovely Linux Mint desktop, but you could be running under Windows or Mac or whatever you wanted to. And first of all, you have to pick your image. So over here, I've picked my image already. I just had to go into that and select from this mass of volumes I've got mounted here. It was in a download and uh, pi and there is our, our image which will uh, open up and uh, then we need to pick the drive to write it to which wants to be our SSD which is connected via USB. So you can see in the middle it's currently picked up a different drive which I don't want to go to and so I'll go into change and oh dear we can't see the SSD. You will probably have this issue if you're connecting an SSD but not a standard USB drive to a PC to write an image to, because Etcher by default protects you from writing to non-removable drives. So what you need to do is to go to the little uh, tooly thing there and to click on unsafe mode, which is always an exciting thing to do, isn't it? Enable unsafe mode, and that will stop it hiding drives, which we do want to see. So we go back here, we go to change. I can now see drives which I really don't want to write things to, but I can also see this 40 gigabyte SSD. That's the Intel drive I want to write to. You've got to be very careful when working in this mode. So we'll continue there. So we can see we're writing our image to the 40 gigabyte SSD. So all we need to do now is to press flash. And of course, this will take quite a long time. It's got to write over four gigabytes of data to the SSD, and the SSD is connected via a USB 2 interface, as it will be on the Pi. So I'll speed through this to get to the end of the process. And here we are. Etcher has finished writing the image to the SSD, and as you probably saw, it also validated the image. One of the great things about Etcher, it doesn't just write images to devices, it also checks it's done it correctly. So now we've got a version of Raspbian on this SSD, we should be able to connect it to our Raspberry Pi and boot it up via USB. So here we are at the moment of truth. Here's the Pi as you saw it set up last with booting from an SD card and next to it here a small recorder with a screen so you can see exactly what's going on. I'll try to think what's the best way to show you all this in one shot in, in real time as it were. I should just say it'd be a good idea on the version of Raspberry you've got on the SD card on this Pi to go in and to edit again the config file just to take off the command on the end so you don't accidentally go and program any Pi's one-time programmable memory by accident if you use that card elsewhere. Just, just tidy things up. Anyway, what you're really interested in now is the fact we can take the SD card out of this Pi. This Pi no longer has an SD card. How could it possibly boot without that? Well, of course, we know we could bring in our SSD with Raspbian on it. And if I can find somewhere to physically put this, we will, uh, didn't plan this all out too, too well, did I? We'll put that in here, in this uh, USB port. Will it sort of maybe sort of rest in there? Um, oh, it will. There we are. So we've now got Pi 
linked to SSD, you can see what's on the output of the screen. I will now press the switch over here to a booty top. And there we are, the lights come on. Now the boot won't be quite as fast as normal because it'll take a while to check it's not gonna boot from the SD card. But now you probably can see the little lights come on on the SSD, that's flicking away. You can see it's actually um, alive, hopefully there. And as you can also see, the screens come on, we've got the familiar boot of the Pi there and indeed the recorder has started to record it. So we can see it is all working. This is doing as it should. So we don't gain a lot of time in booting by using this, this method. In fact, we probably lose time in booting because you lose five seconds on the start, but you might boot a little bit faster if your USB device you use, an SSD or a standard USB drive is a little bit faster than the SD card. It may be, it may not. But as you can see, here we are, we've arrived on the uh, desktop. If I flick to that shot, uh, from the recorder itself, you can see it's all there. This is clearly a clean version of Raspbian, so you're not seeing exactly what we saw previously. I haven't changed the desktop yet. Wi-Fi is enabled, this isn't my first boot. And we can go to, uh, hopefully, the web or something just to prove it all works. And it should boot up, and yes, go to our website. Everything is working. We could go and learn about single board computers, couldn't we, and explaining computers. Look, what are they? Oh, Raspberry Pis and things like that. How exciting. Anyway, there we are. Our experiment here is a success. So there we are. We booted a Raspberry Pi 3 over USB 2. Now, OK, it would be even better to boot a Raspberry Pi over USB 3. But sadly, we haven't got a USB 3 port on the Raspberry Pi, at least at the moment. We'll just have to cross our fingers for what will be on the Raspberry Pi 4. But even so, being able to boot a Raspberry Pi over USB does open up a range of new possibilities. But now that's it for this video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Uh -oh.